So with the psionic now serving as the helmsman to her imperial mothership, the galaxy belongs to the trolls of Alternia. It is not until another fuchsia-blooded troll is born that the Condes may venture even further into the cosmos, for her Lucis is a horror terror of the furthest ring, living deep in the ocean. This creature is capable of emitting an otherworldly pulse known as the Vast Glove, killing off all life as we know it, and the only thing keeping it tame is the connection it shares with a troll of the highest ruling class blood. This Alternian princess is named Feferi Patius, the Fuchsia Eris, born six solar sweeps before the planet's destruction. She works with a descendant of the Orphaner named Eridan Ampora, and together they hunt other Lucite to feed the horror terror of a Lucis that adopted her. While only a couple of sweeps old, a mid-blood troll named Kanaya Merium, descendant of the Dolorosa, is visited by the First Guardian. This mysterious figure continues to visit periodically while she is still young enough to not understand much, and he wakes her in a way so that any time she goes to sleep, her dream self becomes conscious on a strange golden yellow planet, a construct of the game she will eventually play. Kanaya's hive is adjacent to a set of frog temple ruins, another crucial element of the game. One day, a meteor strikes elsewhere on Alternia, not far from a similar frog temple near the hive of a low-blood troll named Aradia Megiddo. She explores these ruins on a daring expedition and finds a mysterious computing device, a battered ventriloquist dummy with a t-shirt that simply reads Cal, and most perplexingly, a broken robot that looks like her. She sends the dummy off to Kanaya to tailor up, and the robot to a machinist friend. Trolls are taught violence from birth, with recreational games such as monster battling and extreme live-action roleplay. Extreme, by the way, means includes lots of death. Two LARPers in particular have slain countless adversaries and amassed a corresponding amount of treasure. They call themselves the Scourge Sisters, Vriska Serket and Terezi Pyro, descendants of the Marquis' Mindfang and the Neophyte Redglare, respectively, often cosplaying as the two in their conquests. The only players who come close to rivaling them are Team Charge, two kids whose horns have sheep and bull-like shapes, with insignias that will become the signs for Ares and Taurus. Team Charge consists of Aradia Megiddo and Tavros Nitrum, descendants of the Handmaid and the Summoner. It should be noted that despite having no direct relation to the providers of one's genetic material, ancestry can be an important factor in troll culture and identity. It's regarded as more important by high-blooded trolls, whereas most low-bloods with their short lifespans don't give a hoot about that stuff. And as strong as Aradia and Tavros are with their telekinetic ability and animal communion, they are no match for Vriska and her mind control, who forces Tavros to jump off a cliff and become paralyzed. In retaliation, Aradia incites the ghost of those who fell victim to the Scourge Sisters to haunt Vriska endlessly. To put a stop to this, Vriska uses her mind control on Aradia's boyfriend, Solux Captor. Solux is another low blood, a descendant of the Psionic, with very similar telekinetic powers, and Vriska forces him to use his flashy eye blast to kill Aradia and destroy her hive. Up until this point, Team Scourge's success has been due in part to Vriska's possession of the same magic cue ball her ancestor once used. Terezi, believing she has gone too far with the killing of Aradia, contacts the First Guardian and informs him of the cue ball's whereabouts. Enraged, he detonates the cue ball as Vriska is peering into it, blowing out her special eye and taking off her arm entirely, matching the injuries given to Mindfang by Red Glare so long ago. As an ultimate act of retaliation, Vriska uses her mind control powers to influence Tavros to use his animal communion powers on Terezi's unborn dragon Lucis to influence Terezi to sleepwalk outside during the daytime. Terezi wakes up staring directly into the blistering Alternian sun and immediately goes blind. And in line with legends of old, 
Briska commissions her friend Equius Zahak, the descendant of the Executor, to craft her a robotic arm. Equius is a brown-nosing, sadomachistic, tough guy machinist, and I use the term friend rather loosely here, because friendship is often regarded as a sort of troll disease. In the way we think of it, Equius really only has one friend. It's his Diamonds partner, Nepeta Leon, an adorably autistic, cave-dwelling, cat-loving descendant of the Disciple. Together, they hunt beasts of Alternia, giant, formidably wild creatures, and they also cuddle while talking about feelings. Despite his castist views, Equius couldn't help but develop a crush on Aradia in the time she was alive, enamored by her etiquette and basically turned on by the taboo of mingling with the low blood. He had been the one working on the robot resembling her, and with her now dead, it is intended to serve as a host to her spirit. Eventually, Solux discovers the game with his elite hacking skills. It is named Sigrub. The narrator notes that if we were developed by a legitimate gaming company, it would have a cooler name, but we're not there yet. If you're wondering why these people from all different casts would be friends in the first place, well, that's just the magic of the internet, y'all. These kids chat with each other through an instant messaging client called Trollian and use the color of their blood to flavor their text. The only exception is their friend Carcat Vantus, the first to enter the game, who has candy red mutant blood, the same as his ancestor, the Signless. While the other trolls' chat text color aligns with that of their blood and cast, Carcat uses an iron gray text, and his insignia is an iconic representation of the sufferer's iron shackles. Okay. Scrub. This game is meant to be played cooperatively, and Carcat will eventually assume the role as the leader, in line with his ancestry. But they start out...